All right, so it is 7.01. Um, Chapin, our chair, will probably be joining on a little bit late. Um, looks like Shayla is joining in, and I think we're just waiting for Megan. Uh, for those of you who are new to using uh, Zoom tonight, I'm going to share some instructions. Uh, please keep yourself on mute when you're not speaking. Webcam use is optional. You can keep your camera off or on. If you do hear an echo when you're talking, uh, you can lower your speaker volume. Use the chat box for Zoom uh, technical questions. The chat does become public record. Um, you can use the raise hand button on the toolbar um, or comment in the chat if you'd like to speak. We'll try to keep all the public comment tonight um, uh, verbal and just use the chat if you're having Zoom issues. We will rely on screen share tonight. Um, when I'm sharing screen, you'll see a green toolbar. You can click view options uh, and select side by side to balance your view between the shared screen and the cameras. You can also toggle between gallery view to see everyone's camera and speaker view. Um, if you are having bad internet connection, you can try turning off your video, closing other tabs or computer programs. Uh, there's also an option next to the microphone symbol on the toolbar to leave computer audio and join uh, via telephone using your telephone as the speaker and microphone. Uh, and shoot me or Matt a comment in the chat if you're having any Zoom issues. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started with community meeting. Um, this is a proposed specific plan for New England Chimney Supply at 34 Commerce Street. Um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Emily Heyman. I'm planning staff. Um, my boss, Matt, is here. He's the planning director. Uh, we staff the Williston Planning Commission, which is a volunteer board of seven members. Um, the specific plan is um, an option in the bylaw for uh, development to um, change the zoning based on a specific proposal. Uh, there's some criteria that need to be met around substantial benefit. Um, I'm going to share a workflow that shows um, where we're at in the process tonight. Um, so a specific plan was presented informally uh, to the Planning Commission and reviewed on February 2nd. They determined that a substantial benefit might be um, viable for this project and moved it forward to community meeting tonight. I'll go over some of the details of what a substantial benefit is in a moment. Um, community meeting is an informal meeting. Um, it is publicly warned to all the abutters. Uh, where the applicant gives a brief presentation. The Planning Commission has general Q&A and discussion with everybody who's in attendance tonight. Um, and then they'll decide if the substantial benefit is um, substantial uh, and they either vote yes or no. If they vote no, the specific plan fails. If they vote yes, um, their motion includes the option to appoint advisory committee we will then make uh, the specific plan changes to the town plan and bylaw. It'll come back to the planning commission for review, and then it will follow a formal adoption process to uh, change the legislative documents of the town plan and the zoning bylaws. Both the planning commission and the select board have to approve these changes before they are final and before the very last step, which is DR DRB review and permit. Uh, but again, we're here near the beginning at community meeting. This is about the property next. And if you could keep yourself on mute um, when you are not speaking, um, that will just help with the background noise. Um, <clears throat> so this is proposed at um, 34 Commerce Street in the industrial zoning district. The specific plan is to change the zoning districts um, of Gateway West and residential uh, to make them industrial for a New England chimney supply 
expansion. Um, the recommend, recommended action for the planning commission tonight um, is to have the community meeting. Um, the applicant will give a brief presentation after me. There'll be ample time for Q&A and discussion with everybody who's in attendance tonight. Um, and then the planning commission will decide um, if there's a substantial benefit. If they decide yes, um, it might vote on the advisory committee as well. Um, if they vote no, the specific plan would fail. There are some attachments tonight. Um, survey responses were um, compiled. There are five survey responses and one comment letter received from the abutting property owners. Those are linked on the website. Uh, the comment letter did include two videos as well. Um, this property was developed in 2015. Um, the bylaw allows the planning commission to make three options, um, no substantial benefit, benefit, and then um, with, a, with a committee and an option without a committee. Because there's a potential for adverse impact on neighboring properties, if this does move forward, we are recommending a committee be established. Um, the Planning Commission must make a finding on substantial benefit. There are five listed in the bylaw and the applicant is proposing two, a major infrastructure asset. In this instance, they're proposing a bus pull off and a concrete, concrete pad for a shelter. Um, the applicant did make an addition of a sidewalk along their frontage and bike shelters based on the feedback from the last minute meetings. Um, and Ben will go over that soon. The, the second substantial benefit is jobs. Um, proposed significant job retention or expansion in a basic industry. So a basic industry is one that exports service or goods. Something like retail um, would not be considered a basic industry, but NECS chimney supply um, manufactures chimney products and is a basic industry. Um, I will note here that mere compliance is not a substantial benefit. So meeting the minimum bylaw requirements is an expectation. Substantial benefits must be actions above and beyond what the applicant would be required to comply with this bylaw. I'll note the bylaw does give the DRB, the Development Review Board, some discretion over sidewalks in areas of low intensity commercial or industrial development. When this project was originally reviewed, the um, review was silent on pedestrian connectivity. It only talked about vehicular and parking access. It didn't talk about sidewalks. Um, more recently, the DRB has required sidewalks. So it's up to the Planning Commission to think about this requirement in Chapter 15 and is the sidewalk along Williston Road part of the substantial benefit or is it just meeting the minimum bylaw requirements? Um, and lastly, in my staff report is options, a motion for no substantial benefit an option for substantial benefit with specific findings about the job retention, um, the benefit that's proposed, as well as some information on the advisory committee. Matt, do you have anything to add before you have to jump over to select board? And Matt might have had to go to select board. Um, yep, so Matt has to attend the select board tonight, um, and he uh, will be back later on in this evening. Uh, Chapin, do you have any questions or comments before I turn it over to Ben? Um, yeah. No, I just wanted to apologize for being late on the call. I actually was here on time, but I was having technical difficulties. Um, so go ahead and turn it over to Ben. Okay, very good. Uh, thank you, everybody. My, my name is Ben Heath, and I'm the Vice President of Hamlin Consulting Engineers. Our office is located in Essex Junction. Um, I'm here this evening representing WSW Investments and New England Chimney Supply as 
Um, Emily noted they have submitted a specific plan application to the Town of Williston Planning Commission uh, for the purposes of constructing an expansion to their existing manufacturing facility located at the corner of Commerce Street and Williston Road. Um, the goal for me this evening is to help you all understand the needs and goals of the, of the landowner, hopefully briefly here, and uh, the existing and proposed conditions of the site. And for this meeting to continue the working relationship with the planning commission, town staff, and future members of the advisory committee to um, hopefully realize the proposed substantial public benefits and site improvements associated with this specific plan. Um, for those of you that attended the, the meeting last month in March, uh, most of this information that I'm going to provide is, is going to be repetitive and, and hopefully a reminder for you. And I'll, uh, again, we'll try to get through it quickly. Um, I'm gonna share my screen here. Perfect. Um, okay, so the existing manufacturing facility that's located at the corner of Commerce and Williston Road was constructed in 2016. Uh, for what it's worth, I was the engineer of record for the original project development. Um, and, and through the hard work and uh, the core values of the employees and management, uh, NECS has outgrown this location. Um, and so the goal of this project is in this proposal is to expand the existing footprint of the industrial building um, and provide additional parking for new and existing employees to give NECS the room that they need in order to stay comfortable and successful right here in Williston. Um, now, in order to position themselves to get this process started, the applicant has purchased two neighboring parcels to the west. Um, so on this plan here, uh, just to get everyone oriented, this is Williston Road. And hopefully I can annotate. Uh, okay, well, um, we'll have to skip the annotations. So this is Williston Road here, um, and this is Commerce Street. And this is the existing lot where the existing facility is located now. Um, the parcel directly to the west is this parcel here outlined all the way around with using my cursor. Um, this parcel has split zoning. There's a residential zoning on the south and a gateway west zoning on the northern section. And then to the west of that parcel is another lot which was purchased by the applicant and uh, that's located here. And that is gateway west zoning district. Um, so the, the existing facility is located within the industrial, industrial zoning district. Um, but the goal here is to merge these three parcels into one. Um, to accommodate the proposed expansion of New England Chimney. And as part of that, the applicant proposes as required uh, to amend the town plan and to amend the official zoning district map adopted in the Town of Williston uh, development bylaws. Now, as Emily had pointed out, um, as outlined in chapter nine of the town bylaws, the applicant um, must propose to provide to at least two substantial benefits to the town. And the first one is a significant job retention or expansion in the basic industry. So, you know, NECS is a light manufacturing facility, which is considered a basic industry. And the goal here for this project is to construct an expansion to the facility um, in lieu of moving the operations to their sister facility in Virginia. Um, so should this project be approved and constructed, it will provide significant job retention and job expansion. Um, the second public benefit, substantial public benefit to the town is a, is a major infrastructure asset. Um, it's important to note that this, the specific plan process is very specific for this. Um, it requires that the applicant identify a needed or desired public infrastructure in the town plan. Um, so the applicant can't just choose anything that they want to, to build or help build. Um, they have to pick something that's in the plan and then propose to help the town achieve that needed infrastructure goal. Um, and there's many different ways the applicant can help the town achieve those goals, either by providing assistance with design, permitting, land acquisition, and or actually constructing those improvements. So I'd like to uh, move on here to uh, what's known as the specific plan, which um, the town requires a, a really big zoomed out view of your project. Um, so to help everybody see kind of a more of a regional uh, image of, of what you're proposing to do. Um, and so to get everyone oriented again, uh, this is 2A over here and Taft Corners is located in the right hand corner here. Um, Williston Road is located here and Commerce Street is located here. And uh, this white building here is the existing facility uh, for New England Chimney Supply and the 
from a very zoomed out view, you can see some of the proposed improvements and we'll get into a, a, a site plan that really zooms in on this stuff so we can look at it together. Um, as part of this process, when we, when we went through the town plan, we had to identify some uh, goal or some need or some infrastructure need from the town, uh, from the town plan. And uh, our goal was to try to find something that was within our grasp. In other words, we, um, we, we typically these kinds of improvements are, are on um, are on private property and, and finding a project on public property, it can be a challenge. Um, and in the, especially in the transportation sector. Um, and so we were able to find the need in the town plan for a bus pull off in this section of Williston Road. Um, and when we identified that, we realized that we could accomplish that goal uh, on the lands that we have access to. Um, and we could associate that with the proposed improvements that, that we were hoping to gain as part of this process. Um, so I would like to go to Google Earth here and get out a plan view to help everybody just kind of um, see the lay of the land. So I was I was zoomed way out before um, we had task corners over here and New England chimney supply is located here. Um, so when we were digging through the town plan, we had identified that, that the, the town had identified there was an issue with with bus stops in, in this location of Williston Road and there was a need for some bus pull offs. Um, We've observed why the town had that in their in the town plan. Um, there's a there's a bus pull off located generally here, uh, which is called the Williston Road at Commerce Street, and the bus stops uh, in the road generally drop uh, blocking traffic, um, causing a queue behind it, and uh, the vehicles stack up behind the bus and causing an obstruction at the intersection, which is a, a traffic flow problem and and a uh, safety issue. Um, as folks are trying to turn left or right out of here, they're either obstructed as they turn right because the bus or queuing vehicles are in the way, or if they're trying to turn left, sight distance is a problem with the bus located here in their way, of, in their line of sight of folks that are traveling westbound. And of course, they can't turn in any direction if there's vehicles queued across the intersection. Um, and so we recognize that safety concern and that that need for uh, improvement to the transportation flow pattern. Um, and we also found that the the, the nearest um, bus stop in this eastbound lane was located at the intersection of uh, Williston Road at uh, South Brownell. Um, and again, this is another a tricky bus stop. It's, it's, at, it's at the uh, head of an intersection. Um, you know, it, it, there's issues with uh, vehicle queuing and safety as, as well. And as you, as some of you folks know, um, there are pedestrian facilities on Williston Road in this area um, on both the north and south side of the road. Um, on the north side of the road, there is a, a multi-use path, which you can, you can see here. Um, it's a paved multi-use path and it kind of zigs in and out of the right of way. Um, there's a bike lane in both the eastbound and westbound lanes. Um, there are no other pedestrian facilities on the south side of Williston Road um, other than the bike lane. And um, there, is not, there was no provision or desire in the town plan to have um, pedestrian facilities other than this bike lane um, on the south side of, of Williston Road. And so when we realized that this was an option for us and that this could be a good avenue, we, we contacted uh, Green Mountain Transit, uh, GMT, which is what formerly known as uh, CTTA. Um, we brought up this concept to them. Uh, they were, I, I think, I think they were excited that we were considering this option um, after we had explained it to them, and we had kind of looked at the geometry and the, and the details of this of this section of Williston Road. Um, you know, we performed a site visit with GMT to review issues like site distance, queued traffic limitations, et cetera. Um, and upon completion of a few Zoom meetings and uh, the site inspection, GMT uh, representatives confirmed that a bus pull off in this area would benefit the transportation, uh, transportation system um, and improve safety. So with, with that concept in mind, um, we also had a, a meeting with representatives from the Vermont Agency of Transportation, you know, to talk through some of the details at a very high level, you know, nothing really specific, but we wanted to make sure that this was a permittable act um, and that we weren't knocking on a door that could never open. Um, and it sounded like there was opportunity to move this forward. Of course, you know, nothing has been approved at this point, but we've got the conversation started with, with uh, the Vermont Agency of Transportation with an understanding that it is possible to build this and it is permittable. Um, so from there, we uh, developed a site plan. Um, and that site plan um, 
is, look, is shown here and includes the improvements that are proposed to benefit New England chimney supply um, and also the uh, substantial public benefit that we propose in terms of this bus stop. So um, to help everybody get oriented again, I've, I've got Williston Road to the top of the page here. Uh, Commerce Street is located over here to the right. Um, this block here is the existing facility or the existing building um, that, is, that houses New England Chimney Supply. Um, for those of you who are not that familiar with the site, uh, there's an existing access drive off of Williston Road located here. Um, it's supposed to be an, an enter only location um, where vehicles uh, enter in from this location and there's a, a circular traffic pattern that conveys vehicles, um, both tractor trailer and pedestrian vehicles in a circular pattern. Um, and we've got a loading docks located generally here. So um, as we had mentioned, uh, the applicant purchased the two neighboring lots to the west. Um, I can kind of outline the first lot, which is shown here um, directly to the west of the existing facility. And the second lot, which was purchased is this uh, lot shown here. And so the, the general um, flow or a concept of this project um, isn't changing, it's expanding. So we, we basically want to eliminate the existing access drive that's located here and relocate it um, somewhere between 75 and 100 feet to the west. Um, and to maintain that same traffic pattern, that circular traffic pattern that we have for the existing facility. Um, I, I should mention this yellow block here is the proposed building expansion. It's about 30,000 uh, square feet. Um, and you know the, the the goal here is to provide New England chimney supply with 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 more room. They're you know for lack of better terms, they're busting at the seams. They need more warehousing space. They need they need more parking spaces, um, and they they need to get themselves better positioned so that they can perform their work more efficiently. Because in their current space, they're they're just overflowing, um, and so that that's that's the main driver here for this project. Um, so getting back to the to the to the site design and the traffic design. Here, the vehicles will pull in from this direction. We'll, uh, I'm assuming VTRANS will uh, require a, a trucks entering only sign like they did on the previous project. So uh, and we'll probably just propose that from the get go anyway. Um, so vehicles will come in from Williston Road. Uh, passenger vehicles would have the opportunity to park in this new uh, parking lot we have shown here. Um, and that same circular traffic pattern will exist where vehicles will be conveyed around the western side of the site and will um, be able to exit through the existing access drive onto Commerce Street. And there'll be a, a pavement expansion that will start generally here where the, where the pavement ends for the existing facility. Um, the site design also includes pa passenger vehicle uh, parking spaces over here on the south side of, of, this, of this lot and four new loading dock spaces. Um, the existing loading dock spaces will stay the same. There are no proposed changes uh, to those facilities. Now, um, as part of this project uh, and as required by the specific plan, we've also included uh, what we believe to be is a substantial public benefit um, in the form of a, of a transportation improvement, as I had described earlier. Um, at this zoomed out view, you can see here, we've got uh, a bus pull off located in this general area. Uh, and I'm gonna zoom in here just so everybody can kind of see what we're, what we're looking at. Um, Williston Road, you know, kind of drops off uh, to the south of the edge of the roadway. And so we plan to build that up to essentially extend the limits of the edge of the roadway and provide a, a location for a bus to pull completely off the road. Um, the bus will, will sit in idle in this general location while vehicles will be, and, and bicyclists will be able to pass by while the, the bus is performing its loading and unloading. Um, our original proposal had included a bus shelter um, in this general location here, um, the, a concrete pad where uh, GMT has a, a certain specific shelter that they use. I'm sure you folks have seen them when you drive uh, down uh, roadways in Chittenden County. Um, they would place that bus shelter there um, and uh, to provide folks with a place to, to wait and rest in the dry um, while they uh, wait for the bus. And then uh, the Town staff had recommended that we consider um, providing an expansion to that concrete pad um, so that we could also install some bike lockers. Um, these are, they almost look like um, industrial tents, but they're made of metal um, and they, they provide uh, a location for folks to bring their bikes. They ride their bike to the bus stop. 
they open up the lo the bike locker and they put the bike in and it's in a safe, secure place. They go, perhaps go to work for the day and then on their way back, they can pick up their bike again and, and um, use the existing bicycle facilities um, to, to as another mode of transportation. So we've, uh, the applicant has agreed to not only provide the concrete for that, but also to purchase um, the bike lockers to accommodate that request. Now, another one of the uh, requests from the planning commission at the previous meeting was to provide um, pedestrian access in the form of a sidewalk from this bus shelter to Commerce Street. Um, and for folks that weren't at the previous meeting, um, we went into great detail about the existing um, pedestrian facilities in and around this area. And um, to the best of our knowledge, what's happening here is folks are getting off at the Commerce Street uh, bus stop and they're picking some desire line that's not a, necessarily a, a bona fide uh, transportation facility and they're walking, you know, let's say they work on Commerce Street down in one of these buildings, they're getting off here, um, they're walking into the roadway um, and, and making their way to wherever they're going or perhaps they, they work somewhere mid block um, between Brownell or, and uh, Harvest Lane. Um, there are no mid block uh, crosswalks between these two intersections and, and you know with the amount of traffic that's in this area um, it's uh, I, don't, I think that it's advised that we don't pursue a mid-block crossing um, and, I, and I haven't heard anybody suggest one either um, and so in order to try to uh, one of the concerns that was what was vocalized by the committee was that we you know we were providing a, a location for folks to get off at New England chimney supply but once they were there you know where would they go um, and so they asked that we provide a sidewalk to get folks to Commerce Street um, so we've got a sketch plan that shows this we've We've, um, we haven't, as you'll see, a portion of this sidewalk is in the VTrans right of way. We haven't had a conversation with VTrans about the permitting process for that. Um, and I, you know, I think I wanted to first take the temperature of this group um, but prior to having those conversations. And um, if, if folks are, are amenable to this solution, then we would, we would have those conversations. Um, and, and another piece um, was that the town staff, uh, after we had submitted this plan, had suggested that we take this sidewalk and extend it into the right of way so that it um, could be uh, part of a, a future expansion of sidewalk to the west. Although at this time there is no plan in the town plan to have a sidewalk on the uh, south side of Williston Road. Um, and I want to speak to that comment that was made by staff tonight about how um, you know, it, maybe there was some uh, people, folks were wondering why, why wasn't there a sidewalk proposed on the south side of, of Williston Road when the original facility was constructed? And is it merely meeting the um, development rules to add a sidewalk here in it, or, or is it a public benefit? And, and I would say um, that because the town had not um, required the sidewalk during the previous project, mainly because there was no plan to have pedestrian, these pedestrian facilities on the south side of Williston Road, um, and that we are preemptively providing that, that facility, even though it's not in the town plan, that it is considered a public benefit, and that it isn't just mere um, uh, adherence to, to the bylaws. So I think that that pretty much sums up our goals and needs and to provide some information about the proposed site geometry for the project um, and the proposed substantial benefits. Um, I can I either turn it over to Emily at this point and or accept questions about the project. Chapin, um, as Planning Commission Chair, do you have any comments? Um, <clears throat> yes, thank you, Ben. Um, I do have a specific question about the change from last time, which is the sidewalk. Um, our public works department likes our um, pedestrian ways to be plowable with a pickup truck so that it's much faster and less expensive to maintain. And um, so the, the multi-use path that's on the other side of Route 2 is an example of that type of, you know, an asphalt surface that's wide enough for the truck. Um, is that possible with this design? Maybe. Um, it would most, you know, from a real quick look here, it would, it may involve removing some of the large trees uh, that kind of serve as nice landscaping along Williston Road. Does, does the town of Williston have sidewalk plows? 
It does. It has a Once. few sidewalk plows. Yeah. Um, is the... Well, one really good one. And um, yeah. Okay. Well, but they're um, slow. I haven't. I, I would need to really vet that concept. Um, my first glance is that it's tight. There's a lot of stuff in the way. You know, I think I think the, the main reason why the town never pursued any pedestrian facilities on this side of the road and really didn't have it in their town plan is because there are astronomical uh, hurdles in the way of accomplishing that, in the way of land acquisition, existing utilities, relatively significant existing landscaping, and there already is existing pedestrian facilities um, bo on both sides of the road. Um, and so I, th I think, you know, it's, a, it's going to be a very big challenge, even just to get a sidewalk through here, you know, a 10 foot multi use path. Um, that could be the, the dagger that that prevents you, the town from achieving that 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 mm -hmm. entire goal. But again, I would have to vet that completely in order to provide you with an absolute answer. Chapin, what 15.2.4 uh, in the bylaw says, must sidewalks or recreation paths be provided? Um, sidewalks that are designed and built to comply with the Williston Public Works standards must be provided along both sides of proposed roads, except where the DRB finds that the type or density of development served by the proposed road does not necessitate a sidewalk or recreation path, or at least one on both sides of the road. In making this determination, the DRB shall be guided by these principles. Uh, the DRB may limit the requirement for a sidewalk to only one side in, of a proposed road in areas of low intensity commercial or industrial development. Um, this is right on the line here. In the previous DRB history, when this project was approved, these topics often tended to be glossed over in the review and in the staff reports. The more recent history with the Development Review Board is a more exacting review of sidewalk and pedestrian facilities. For example, uh, when U-Haul was permitted uh, down the road on Williston Road, uh, the DRB did require a sidewalk they opted, um, there was some back and forth in that discussion about sidewalk or rec path because uh, bike lanes had just been striped onto Williston Road. They decided that a sidewalk was appropriate because there on, are on street bike facilities um, and the sidewalk was proposed there. So it's uh, a topic for discussion for the Planning Commission tonight if this sidewalk is or is not part of the substantial benefit based on the definitions in chapter nine and what the bylaw says about when sidewalks are required. Thank you, Emily. Other questions from commissioners? I can't see everybody at once on my screen. So if speak up, if um, Shayla, go ahead. Hi. And um, sorry, Benjamin, if you'd already talked about this, but one of our other requests was that you go to the neighbors and just check in again with the neighbors. I, I was wondering if you, the applicant was able to do that. Well, we've had some correspondence with some neighbors. Um, we did not, it was my understanding that the town was going to be providing documentation to the surrounding neighbors in the form of a survey, um, providing some additional information about these meetings. I, I guess I didn't catch the concept that we were to reach out to them individually again for this project. And if that was an error on my part, I apologize, but I don't, I don't recall that direction. Right, Shayla, when we noticed the community meeting, we did include a survey. Um, those were provided on the webpage um, and I can pull up the survey results. I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal the share screen. Yes, here I can, I can get it off here for you. Oh, there you go. Um, there were five survey responses and one comment letter. Um, if you want to read through those now, um, we can, or we could also open up for public comment. We did include the question, um, thinking more broadly, what public infrastructure improvements to your neighborhood or surrounding area would be of benefit to you and your neighbors? That was a question that the commission suggested asking. The responses were, there is a bike path along the north side of Route 2 already. Nothing. Third response, another lane and a traffic light. People drive faster to get to Brownell to beat the light. 
50 miles per hour. And fourth response, plenty of tall trees, presentable wooden fences, and a bike path access. Um. Yeah, sorry, Emily, you don't have to go through it here. I'll, I'll read that. You can open a public comment. Yeah, and then the, the comment letter pro provided um, some more information about um, some of the, the noise, outdoor storage, um, and other site development concerns with the existing site. Emily, um, can you advise how many surveys went out? There were five responses, but how many were mailed? Um, let me pull up the abutters list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. About um, I want to say like less than twenty. It looks like there's eighteen or nineteen on the abutters list. Um, were mailed out. Uh, four responses, one comment letter. One gentleman did call me. Um, so in the staff report packet. Let me share screen again. Did call me and say he was interested on serving the advisory committee if one was established. Um, so that survey also asked for people who are interested um, if this does move forward. Um, a couple of them are in attendance tonight. Um. The attachments that are connected to the um, agenda are extensive. And so um, if folks haven't had a chance to read them and have a question, I wouldn't shy away from asking the question and Emily or I can probably, or Ben can probably answer it. Yeah, and I'm dropping a link in the chat um, to the town webpage where the staff report I screen shared, um, the survey responses, all that is publicly available online. Um, and I did include uh, the revised site plan that um, Ben shared with me today and that he shared in his presentation. It looks like there is one raised hand from Heather. Um, Heather, go ahead and talk. Hello, Emily. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Heather. I am um, one of Jeff and Heather Soren. We are abutting landowners of the 5222, uh, 52222 property on Will Williston Road. Um, we had a question as to whether or not our, um, the letter that you're talking about, the comment letter we had to actually send to you because the survey would not accept our photographs and our and our video and we want to know if the comment letter and the video and everything included is available for everybody to view as well since it was not actually on the survey yes i did include your uh, letter with the videos on the website i took your email addresses off there uh, for spam reasons um, but that was shared with the Planning Commission uh, with the survey results. We saw your letter, Heather. Do you have any comments about anything or any questions? I um, guess I'm curious, Heather, um, if any of the things that were suggested around, you know, their, their discussion of the chimney place sort of bursting at the seams and if the, some of the things that have been documented around pile ups or fence posts, if that would be mitigated by this opportunity to expand and have better barriers um, and things planned in that intention of trying to, you know, have a space that's suitable for the work they're trying to, to do in your community, in our community. Uh, would you mind, um, who is speaking at this point? Sorry, this is Jill. I'm on the Planning Commission. I did read your, your memo and I, I was just curious with the information you heard if you thought some of these things might be tempered by um, 
them trying to have more space to get their trucks around and, and store the equipment properly and those types of things. So are you asking about the impact it'll have on us or, or I guess I, my video cut out a little bit. I, I'm curious because I don't, you know, I don't live in, in that um, part of the community and I'm not sure if the traffic idling, you know, there's a lot of these competing concerns. And I was curious if things that um, seem like a problem in terms of the aesthetic of seeing fences knocked down or um, things piled up, if, if you think by them having more space to contain and have their equipment functioning as they'd like, if, that, if you think that that would be um, helpful. It, I feel like it would be exacerbated um, by this expansion. Um, everything that we're hearing now as the abutting landowners, and I know I can certainly speak for my neighbors, um, Sarah and John Rock, who are also online right now that we hear absolutely everything. And if this was to move forward, um, the, just, the, just the fact that the, the, the forklifts you were talking about adding more, um, more um, loading docks, the, everything would be exacerbated as to what we hear now and what we smell now and what we see now. Um, you know, we're not opposed to, we just need to preface by saying we're not opposed to, you know, Williston um, and NECS, you know, wanting to move forward, but there needs to be some significant, significant, um, you know, even a fence or something of that sort to block our neighborhood from this proposed change. Um, there's, there's so many facets to it. Um, Excuse me, hi, my name's Jeff Sword, Heather's husband. A couple of things I'd like to touch on, it was in the letter, but I definitely wanna make sure you understand that when trucks start, when forklifts start at four in the morning, it's just not right. When you can hear it through your house, through the air conditioning, <coughs> through your doors when everything is closed, it's just not right. You can hear people's conversations outside. You can smell the cigarette smoke outside. We're sitting on our deck and you smell the exhaust of all the trucks running. We were told at one time, and I'm sorry if I'm a little excited. I've been waiting to get this out. We were told at one time they won't start the work day until eight in the morning and they end at six at night. That is not correct. That was a fib, a lie, exaggeration. They start four to 4.30 in the morning. They have the trucks running. And they're as late as nine or 10 o'clock at night. And I know I'm repeating what Heather probably wrote, but folks, you have to understand if you're having a life and all this stuff's going on, it disrupts our normal life. And now the fact that you want to expand all of this is, is really disrupting our entire neighborhood. You have to it's understand. That. To us too. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I just, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was saying it's pushing it closer to us as well. It, exactly. This is Sarah and John um, Rock. There are there are neighbors to the um, northwest of us. We share a lot line with them as well, and they share a lot line with five two 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 Williston Road, and they are also, I believe, strongly opposed to this expansion because it brings everything closer to us. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the picture. It will be our yard that's completely um, now filled with an employee parking lot. So um, our house is the one that has right next to our yard will be the employee parking. So um, I'm a recruiter in the area. I completely support employee um, retention and and everything else. But you know when those people go home they leave their building, their, their workplace, and we are stuck looking at loading docks and now cars that will be lining our fence. Um, Heather and Jeff and, and John and I both have dogs. So that's a disruption to them. Um, we aren't excited about having now a bus um, pull off with more foot traffic, with more people just possibly loitering on the other side of our property, it's um, it's a lot, and we're we're discouraged, really, at this point. Um, to see we we basically feel like we're just kind of being squished out with all of this around us, and it's it's upsetting. 
Thank you. Um, are there other questions? And by the way, is that you screen sharing, um, Ben? Yes, I was just trying to help everybody see where these I folks did, yeah. live. And I didn't. I didn't know if people understood that North was then on the now on the right side instead of a, on the top. And because uh, I was disoriented for a minute, and uh, if you could bring that back, I'm still not sure where the Rocks House is. Although I see where their property is. Sure, sure. So you're it's right. Not this curvy is, lane, right. This you're right. So, this is rotated. Uh, I could I could put it the way we had it uh, earlier. No, that's okay. I just want to make sure people weren't confused. Okay. Oh, there. <laughs> now North is at the top. <laughs> and could you screen share the one that shows the proposed conditions next to yeah. their properties? So I have, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the Soren property and this is the Rock property? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, and what now is sort of an empty um, yard yeah. between mm -hmm. the Rock property and your property it has yeah that that right. yard there that that would be taken up by building and em, driveway and just employee the parking yeah, um, main, yeah, and yeah and mainly the down. parking yep it, it really was, isn't any building proposed in that location it's, it's more of a parking well i guess you know to the north yeah, a little into more, it a lot yeah bumps the building out a lot closer to yeah. us yeah it's both um and, and so I think, I think I'll take the opportunity to just to, before we get too far ahead here, uh, to speak to Jill's question. Um, you know, you're absolutely right that that is the goal here. You know, there's, there's some operational preferences that are going on uh, or non-preferences that are going on now that we want to fix. Um, we, the, the facility is busting at the seams. And I think many of the concerns that were brought up in um, both verbally tonight uh, in the videos and um, in the survey, some of those uh, issues and concerns have already been dealt with, and I think it would be it would be good for the applicant uh, to take uh, some time to go through each of those um, if this committee feels it's warranted, because um, I think that those are are important. You know, there was some sound decibel levels taken uh, during a certain uh, piece of equipment running at the facility. There was uh, some some tree and fence issues, and to my best of my knowledge, um, and Pierre and and neighbors, correct me if I'm wrong, but many of those have been have been resolved. Um, but there are still ongoing activities out there that the neighbors are unhappy about. And the goal of this project is to provide the facility with enough space to try to mitigate those problems. Thank you, Ben. Um, Emily, I see that um, mm -hmm. um, people from the public have their hand up. And um, I wonder, shall we go mm -hmm. ahead and let the discussion be open at this point? Um, yeah, let's have Cindy go. And then it looks like Heather and Jeff um, after Cindy. Cindy, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, Emily, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, okay. Hey, Chapin um, and everybody else. Um, this uh, project, um, and I can um, basically go with uh, what Heather was saying. I'm directly across the road from this um, building. Um, the existing building is to the left of my driveway if I'm heading out, um, and the new proposed space will be directly in front of my driveway and my house, um, as well as well the bus stop, which um, is a whole issue with traffic and with the potential conflict of the residences, all of our residences being impacted by noise traffic and the big thing is our property values um, based on a zoning that personally doesn't belong there um, and I hadn't really thought about this so completely before but so they're they're proposing to add on to an industrial building to further go down Williston Road which is never going to be zoned industrial the it's it's not as the gateway sits now as we know um and based on every other business on williston road it's commercial resident uh, retail it's commercial there's not going to be industrial on williston road it's just not within the zoning and if it is it's not responsible zoning as as i see it um based on everything down the road all the way to taft corners and beyond um this and by expanding that building down Williston Road 
and claiming you're going to change zoning to be industrial to add into the mix of then everybody else who will eventually possibly be retail, who knows? But in the meantime, our properties are affected drastically by this addition and proposed, um, proposed addition, as well as the noise. We can hear the noise from there across the road. The person that's behind me on my right away can hear the noise during the day. They're home during the day, typically I'm not I'm working. Um, but I can totally feel how this is impacting all these residences behind them. And you can say you're gonna mitigate it by having more space, but no, you're creating more noises. You're going from four loading docks to eight. You're going to more talk parking and more traffic that's gonna imp implement more noise and more motion and actions going around, especially for something that should be in an industrial park, not on Williston Road. Um, this is something, I feel it's not responsible to add industrial onto Williston Road when it's never ever going to be the same for everybody else. Um, it's just not, it wasn't zoned that way, it hasn't been zoned that way, and it shouldn't be based on a responsible zoning plan in the town. Um, Commerce Street is an industrial park, an industrial road, and that's where it should be kept, not going down Williston Road. Um, the impacts are too much, and I'm sorry, I'm going on and on, but this is all things I think is very relevant. And the bus stop, the bus stop, it's all great, but I spoke with the gentleman um, at Green Mountain Transit, um, John Moore, um, and he specifically told me that this is not a location that they would specifically endorse based on where it is. It's nothing that they would, only were they interested because the work would be done, but it's not a lo great location based on how people would get from one place to another. Um, and there just isn't the foot traffic there. They sent me a, um, a log of the ridership on that road. Um, it shows on Williston Road and Brownell for one week time, two week time, zero people on that bus on the Commerce Street location at the, on this week. Um, only, um, Brownell Road was one, one day, two, one day, one, one day, two, one day, a maximum of seven people for the week um, on one week. And the next week was five for that week. And the same held true on Williston. It only showed one on the next week for any kind of ridership for that whole week. So I'm just saying that they're trying to push something in for the transit part too that is very little benefit to the community because there just isn't foot traffic on that road. Mostly it's people walking their dogs that live across that road. There's not a lot of people traveling from one place to another um, to go to work or anything like that. It's just not the area where people do that. Um, so that in point, um, I'll, I'll let you go. Sorry, I was a little long winded, but I feel it's all important things um, to do with this project. Um, and it is based on the project um, and how it affects everybody. So thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Cindy. Um, Heather and Jeff. Sure thing, Cindy, thank you so much. You um, have said so much and you probably have said um, exactly what every single neighbor in this neighborhood has felt and wants to say. Um, basically what I wanted to do was just ask everybody online if they had any questions to the abutting landowners or any questions about the um, surveys that we sent out that, um, or the um, comment letter. So um, uh, this, is, this is Pierre doing on chimney. Um, Thank you all for, for being here. Um, so I've got Mr. Royer here in our conference room uh, who needed access to the internet to get on this meeting, who was an abutting landowner. Um, and he was asking to say a few words. Hi, <clears throat> I live at 5182 Williston Road. And, and I personally live fairly close to this building. And I don't hear these trucks and <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have a problem with these people. Most of the junk that comes on our lawns in front of our building come from the travel on Williston Road, not from anywhere else. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, th these are good neighbors. They're quiet. Where I live, I sleep with the window open in the summertime and I have no problem. I, I don't know 
why I don't and someone else does? That would be a good question that I, I guess I would like answered. Uh, the trucks, I guess maybe I'm used to trucks, so trucks don't bother me. I've been around trucks most of my life, but the trucks don't, I don't hear the trucks idling. I don't hear this talking or this other stuff at any time. I have to honestly say, I have never been woken by this company or any noise from it at, at, at any off hour. And, and as far as, you know, when I bought this property, I planned on it probably would be resi uh, commercial at some point because Wilson Road's a very busy road. And, and if we look around, it's closing in on us very very fast with the, the, the piece of property being sold across from O'Brien's there and, and U-Haul going in down where it's going in, you're talking about general public, not some something that can be controlled by, by an individual. And, and again, I, I have no problems as far as there's no trash, there's no coffee cups, there's no talking that, that I've heard. There, there's no, when the cars leave at night, there's no squealing of the tires. There's no, they, they don't cut out in front of people. I, I haven't had some of the issues that some of these other people are concerned about. I, I have a concern about the sidewalk they want to put in. We have a sidewalk across the street. No one maintains it. If I don't mow it and the other neighbors don't mow it, then it doesn't get mowed. It gets, it, it isn't, it doesn't get plowed in the winter. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're beating a, a, a horse here that I think, I, I don't know why, but if we, I think we live in a good town and, and I really feel that this town is, is trying to control the growth and, and do it in, in, a, in a nice fashion. But I think time is only going to be of the essence. It, it's going to all be gone because it's coming. And, and it's coming very fast, I feel. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, the, the Planning Commission, I think, does a great job. And, and again, you know, we now have a full-time fire department. We have a full-time police department. You know, we have to plan on what, what are we going to do with all these things? We don't need ladder trucks to fight residential fires. We, we don't need, you know, all these other things. Yes, we have a lot of businesses that have grown, and, and the things keep going up. Taxes keep going up. And, and every time a business wants to come in, we should lower our taxes and, or help maintain the sidewalks or do something else. We're, we're fighting them. Now, the sidewalk can be used in the winter and there's a lot of travel on that in the summer, a lot. And, and again, I, I haven't had one issue. And, and I feel if I did have an issue that I could come over to this office and it would be taken care of. And Thank you. I guess that's all I have to say. I, and again, I bought my property knowing it was probably going to be commercial. So, you know, when it's on, on a main road like this, you, you probably got to open your eyes and figure out that times are changing. And, you know, if we can keep things out here in the front, and I understand about the people across the street. I, I don't know about them, but if you can keep more things on the main highways, it does give more privacy to the people in the back. And, and it's coming up from the back. I mean, we have we have coming up South Bernal. It's, it, it's getting there. But again, uh, that, that's all I have to say. As a neighbor, as close as I am, and, and I have no problems with coffee cups, talking, trucks, or noise at all. And, and I'm not getting paid to say this. I, I came because I, I'm of interest of this project because I think it'll be a good project, but I am not gaining anything by this or by telling the story. And, and when my neighbors sold, I had good neighbors before and I still think I have good neighbors now. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, um, Heather and- Chapin, I think there were a couple of people um, there was a, a Cheryl Senecal on um, who was next, yes. but I think they left the meeting. Up next is Ashley Fouts. Yes, um, I had. Ashley, go ahead and unmute yourself. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so I have three points that have been discussed by several people um, throughout, and I just wanted to address them all. Um, I didn't catch the name of the gentleman that's with 
Pierre, but he had mentioned that the sidewalk um, that is on Route 2 now isn't well maintained. I would 100% agree. Um, so I don't necessarily know that adding one to the other side of the road would prove to be super beneficial. Um, I have driven or I've um, biked with my daughter in a toolie on there and there are sticks and pine cones and grass clippings and everything on there. We've tried to walk and it's been snow covered until it melts. So I don't necessarily believe that building a sidewalk just for the proposed um, bus stop would be super beneficial. I think what would be more beneficial is a crosswalk with the flashing lights or something to call to people's attention to funnel potential people to the other side of the road where there's an existing sidewalk. Um, I think that would be super beneficial. Um, the second point I wanted to, I, I guess, ask a question to be answered um, about the parking that I believe Heather and Jeff Soren had mentioned from the drawings that um, Ben presented, it looked like there were gonna be 44 additional spots um, with the proposed expansion. So I didn't know, because I, I'm not a neighbor, I don't live directly there. I do live close to the facility. I didn't know if that would mitigate any of the parking issues that you all had. Um, and then the third thing relates to noise. Um, I do not wanna start any sort of political or, you know, further tangent, but I mean, we live in the area where F-35s are loud and proud. And even before that, the F-16. So we all knew buying homes in this area that noise was going to be prevalent. And I believe I saw that the machinery when the decibel reading was made was 89 decibels. And I am pretty sure that the F-35s are well above that. So if we can all live in an area where we hear the F-35s, flying at all hours of the day, um, why there's specific concern about the 89 decibel meter reading of certain machinery. I guess more education on that in comparison to the fighter, fighter jets that we hear. Um, that's all I had. Thank you, Ashley. And when you Thank talked you. about a potential pedestrian crossing, do you, are you speaking at Commerce Street across Route 2? Yes, that's correct. So if the bike, or sorry, if the bus stop went in as proposed, rather than building a sidewalk there to give people room to get on and off the bus, if we did some sort of crosswalk to be able to funnel them to the existing sidewalk, um, I feel like that would be a much, that would provide me personally as a citizen of Williston more benefit because I do go to other facilities down on Commerce Street. So it would provide me more benefit than just for New England Chimney. Um, I know there's a church down there, there's a cat hospital and other businesses down there. So it wouldn't just be for New England Chimney. I think it would benefit a lot of people. And Chapin, if you don't mind, I have just one uh, piece of clarification here to add regarding the, the video of the sound and the decibel levels up to 89 decibels. Um, when we first started this process, we um, reached out to the abutting landowners on the south side of Williston Road to have uh, conversations about this project. And one of the things that was identified during those conversations was that the New England Chimney Supply was using some piece of equipment which was causing a loud noise, which you witnessed in the video. Um, it's my understanding that once that meeting happened and uh, Pierre from New England Chimney uh, identified that that sound was causing those folks harm, they stopped using that piece of machinery. And I, I don't even believe it exists at the facility anymore. And I, I, it's my understanding they're not using it anymore. Um, and that was a, you know, a reaction that the New England Chimney Supply had to their neighbors. And there's been a, there's a long list of those kinds of situations where the neighbors had provided us with information about some issue that was being caused uh, by the New England Chimney. And once they realized that that concern was going on, they immediately addressed it. Thank you, Ben. Um, Emily, should I remind folks that in, in the end, what the Planning Commission is deciding tonight is not um, sort of whether uh, this information is useful from the perspective of dealing with the border between a commercial zone and a, or industrial commercial zone and a residential zone. Um, but in terms of the specific plan, this is, we're not voting on the merits of um, 
New England Chimney Supply, um, we are voting, we are an impact, we do have to take into consideration the impact on the residential mm -hmm. area. Um, but the specific plan vote that we will take tonight is much more is on whether the what's being offered as something for the public good is substantial and is something that is in align with the town plan that we would support. Correct. Yes. <laughs> um, and I, I know we have a couple of folks that still want to provide comment. We can get to that. I do want to give some overview to process and the bylaw. So there is a draft motion with specific findings where the planning commission is deciding is the substantial benefit of jobs and infrastructure meeting what the planning commission decides is um, a substantial benefit. I'm gonna share my screen to the staff report. I included um, in the motion, um, if you decide to move this forward, could result, but only if the infrastructure assets are enhanced as described in the committee charge below. Uh, what the committee charge below has some conceptual ideas, um, a signalized intersection or crosswalk at Route 2 or Commerce Street, intersection improvements with crosswalks at Kirby Lane and South Brunel, or other sidewalk, bike path, or transit infrastructure improvements in the vicinity of New England Chimney Supply that benefit the residents of affected neighbors, na affected neighborhoods. Um, I'm going to go on down. We've I've heard a lot of comments about um, about landscaping and buffering um, and noise compatibility. So the bylaw does have several chapters that have very exacting standards. Um, in terms of compatibility, chapter 18, what I'm recommending is that if this specific plan goes forward, the applicant would need to provide that information um, at the beginning. So an expert opinion on the air quality impacts to neighborhood properties. The specific plan could include hours of operation, um, a noise report, for the requirements of chapter 18.10 about what those noise impacts are and the sound map, um, screening and blowing of litter, a plan for screening and preventing blowing litter, and lastly, a report about vibration, if any of the sounds or noises that are going on are creating a vibration that affect the neighbors. The applicant site plan in terms of landscaping is recommending, is showing a 17.25 feet landscape buffer. Chapter 23 in the bylaw allows for landscape buffers from 23 feet to 50 feet, and there are reductions. Um, the DRB's authority is usually quite limited, but when it comes to landscaping buffers, they do have a little bit more discretion and authority to require additional things like berms and fencing and more landscaping where there is a compatibility issue between residential and industrial uses. Um, hypothetically, if this project were to go forward to um, the advisory committee, what that draft recommendation to them is, is the planning commission is not interested in a specific plan that requires significant relief or deviation from the requirements of chapter 23 landscape buffers. So that like what would likely have to happen is the landscaping plan for this project um, might need to be modified so that it provides the adequate screening buffer width and any other features like berms or fences um, to meet these requirements. Um, chapter 18 does limit sound decibel levels for daytime and nighttime. So the committee with the town staff and the applicant would review these reports and determine does this specific plan need amendments to that chapter in order to be approved. We, they would have to go through every aspect of the development bylaws and look at each site plan component and say, does something need to change for this project to comply or, or does it not? The last one in there is lighting as well. They could look at requiring reduced lighting levels for New England chimney supply. Um, so if this were to move forward, the committee, the applicant and town staff would be looking at those very exacting standards um, and it, it's specific plan, it's the opportunity to write and amend zoning specifically for this project um, to make sure it meets the, the goals of the, the town plan and 
gives the neighbors opportunity to have influence over how this site is designed in a way that's different than uh, the traditional development review process, where this is legislative, not just um, administration. Thank you, Emily. Emily. I see Jill wants to say something, and then do, do you, should we call an L Senate call? Yeah. I'd like to ask a clarifying question too after Jill Chapin, if I could. This okay, Alex. Emily, with this process, do, do we also get to hear, you know, when you're hearing the traffic from the road before the bus built out is built out, so that idling of the traffic pileup, would it sort of, would they get to present information about, you know, the way this is mitigating some of those things in that same report? The idea that there's noise of all kinds and how some, mm -hmm. some of the project plan is preventing some and then how it's adding to potentially. Um, it would... It would look more so at, at the, the probably the noise that's associated with the rear of the yeah, site okay. and less so traffic on Williston Road. Uh, so new yeah. development is required to pay traffic impact fees when new uses are constructed or expanded. Um, but that noise would really look at the idling of trucks, um, the loaders, any machinery manufacturing that radiates beyond the property boundaries. Thank you. Alex? Sure. I just wanted to ask a question of uh, some of the neighbors. Chapin, thank you for clarifying that we're really ruling on whether the public benefit is sufficient to go into the process of this design and for expanding on that, Emily. Um, in, in the nature of the public benefit, right, it's a bus stop along a road that already has a bus stop at Brownell Road, maybe, I don't, I, you know, I don't know the number of feet I probably should, but a couple of hundred feet away. Right, not a significant distance. I guess I would ask any of the neighbors who are willing to expand on that, what's your opinion about the public benefit of the bus stop? Putting all other things aside, assuming for a second that we could come to a design plan around noise, fencing, things like that, that would satisfy you. But just ask the really narrow question. Do you believe that the, the bus stop is sufficient public benefit for us to consider the proposal and why and why not? Can't figure out how to put the icon up to raise our hand, but as a neighbor, I'll just I'll say, so based on um, the uh, GMT's uh, uh, numbers for ridership, it doesn't seem like the bus stop or the shelter really <laughs> provides that substantial of a benefit if there's not that many people that are using the bus. Um, and Cindy, you have your hand up. Yeah, I would just comment that, that I would agree with that uh, previous comment. Great. I'd love to ask the same of, of Heath and, and Pierre too. Like you guys are proposing this as a public benefit, given the bus stop very shortly away on Brownell. Like what makes you guys think that this would be a significant benefit? Like just to, to hear the other side. Well, well the, the bus stop. Oh, oh, go ahead, Pierre. Well, you know, just just from a being a business owner on this and seeing the highly, you know, the high level of traffic on Wilson Road. Anytime a bus stops on the road, you have the potential for an accident. Somebody's in a rush, they try to go around the bus, they can't see. So in, in all actuality, if, if a bus pull off could prevent just one accident, it's got a public benefit to it. But that's just my point of view. Um, and Mr. Uh, Roy here would, would like to say something as well. I, I, I have a question. I, I've heard no one mention about the F-35s. You talk about a noise level. I've never had so much noise level. It rattles the dishes in the cupboard. It does everything. And, and they fly over and, and there's nothing more upsetting than that. You can't talk on the phone. You can't watch TV. You can't carry on a conversation. And, and, and again, I heard none of these other things, but I hear these F-35s and, and we're doing nothing about that. As far as the bus stop goes, the, there's a bus stop down by O'Brien's store and the road is doubled in front of my house. And, and it, it is a hazard at some point in times when the traffic is heavy, probably between 3.30 and 6 o'clock and in the morning around 7.30 to 9. And other than that, the, the bus stop up by the credit union is, is doing an adequate job and it has a sidewalk. So I, I don't know about the buses coming this way going up to the mall and so, uh, to Walmart and places like that, there's never hardly anybody on it. If they are, they're going to Home Depot or Walmart or Hannaford's. 
So uh, this thing, see, so those buses, is, you know, this is Jordan Weidman. I'm the CEO of New, New England Chimney Supply. Those buses are westbound on that, so there's a shelter on that side. This would be an eastbound shelter, so that's right. a, a greater asset. Additionally, the numbers we heard from CCPA, now GMT, are COVID-level numbers. Okay. As we all know, bus ridership and, and community transportation plummeted by 90% during COVID levels. So the numbers we heard about bus ridership, I, I, I would like to hear the timeline of when those numbers, when nobody was riding, the buses on Williston Road were, because we can't take that data from 2020, you know, and, and take that into what, what we're planning for future, future times. Um, you know, I've been on the Williston transportation community on and off since the 90s and there are times that you know industrial ave or williston road in that section were the two of the busiest roads in chitney county so to be able to offer some um pressure relief and safety factors to that can't be discounted we just we just want to be careful just saying well you know i, I talked to ccpa or green mountain transportation or whoever they're called today we can't take those numbers now and call it that's what the future is that's all and I, I have some a little bit, i have a little bit more to add there too um you know i think you have to look at this in a time frame that's appropriate if you take this bus stop and you you pull the bus off the road for the rest of the life of that bus stop you are allowing people you, you're saving the the public time instead of getting queued up behind that bus um, on a day-to-day -day basis for years and years and even decades, the amount of time that is spent in that queue adds up to significant portions of people's, you know, you can, if you took the money that was associated with that in terms of people's time, it can be significant. And I, I, I like to echo uh, uh, Pierre's comment about the safety issue, you know, pulling the bus, bus off the road, the, the bus stop on Commerce Street has been identified as being a safety concern for multiple reasons, we, we discussed them earlier. Pulling the bus off the road, getting it away from the intersection will cause not only a benefit to, this, to the safety of motor operation on Williston Road, but also in the turning movements associated with Commerce Street. Um, and, and, you know, like Pierre said, uh, over, the, over the lifetime of this bus stop, you know, even one accident is, yeah, we would consider that substantial, but we, we believe it could be even more than that. In, in, in the impactful piece of it for us is we have, you know, anywhere between 70 and 80 employees but we have employees who ride those buses to work every day. And when we, we've lost employees in the last year where bus capacity has been decreased in, on their end and they can't get to work. And we've lost employees because the buses routes where they live to get to us have been cut. And it's been impactful for us. It's, it's, it's a little hurtful to watch an employee have to leave because they can't get to work. We're going to do what we can on our end of it. And, and it's just, it's a big deal for folks who want, who want to go to work today. So. Chapin, um, before we move on to Al, I know he's been waiting patiently for a minute. Um, we'll let Al talk. And then we do have Matt Kimball from Green Mountain Transit here, as well as Craig Keller from B-Trans. If you do move forward with advisory committee, they would be representatives on that committee. So I'm thinking let Al go, and then if Matt or Craig have anything to add on, on their front, I'll let them do so. Thank you for pointing that out, because I didn't notice that Matt was there. Hi, Matt. Good. Uh, okay, Al, go ahead. Can, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm just here. Um, I'm a commercial property owner. I'm on the south side. I abut this, um, uh, the, the, the property that we're talking about. Um, and, and I just want you to know, I'm here to support the residential people that have pleaded, it sounds like with you folks, to, uh, to maybe change things up a little bit here for them, for their sake. Um, and, I, and I had a question for somebody, I'm not sure. The special plan, does, does the benefit that this bus stop um, is giving the town, does it really warrant a special plan which would allow uh, not just commercial, but an industrial user to, you know, go into the residential zoning district and build a 35,000 square foot 
building with with parking as necessary because if it is it may be a precedent that the town is setting for other developers to do the same thing i mean i own property that abut residential uh sites if it's that going to be that simple is all i got to do is put a bus stop in buy the property next door and put on 35,000 square foot additions you're going to see it happening all over town over a bus stop and if that is the the way that it's going to be done I'm, you're setting a precedent there um the other question i had was you guys are saying you have 80 employees right now but there's only 35 parking spaces there's cars parked all over the site and um, I don't see how if you put 40 more parking spaces in, you, you might need more than that to to accommodate the 20% growth that you're anticipating as well. Um, and to address the issues on the sidewalk, I mean, I don't know, but 99% of the properties that I've ever built out, I've had to put walkways in, sidewalks in as part of the development, not as a special permit or a special purpose plan. So I, I think that, you know, I'm, I'm just getting into this. And another thing that was said was the, the applicants have contacted the neighbors. I have not been contacted by any of the applicants. And I want you guys to know that I actually have given these people an easement to cross my land. And I would think that I would be the first person that they would have contacted to let me know that there's going to be a 45 car parking lot coming across my property when this thing gets approved. And I got notice in the mail. And so I, I don't think they're being real transparent uh, with this whole thing. And one last thing, and I won't take up any more time. Cecil, you mentioned something about the noise of an F-35. You got to listen a little bit closer. If you really listen close, you'll hear freedom in that sound. Well, listen, I'm not saying that there isn't. I, I'm not opposed to this. But I know. I'm just saying, you know, people are complaining about a little noise. There's a lot of noise. And I mean a freedom, lot of noise. Freedom, freedom does make a lot of noise. Well, you know, freedom. But the other thing is, is, you know what? That might also be the first place they bomb, too, because that's where the plane is. You know, so I'll, freedom probably... I'll put, there's I'll no put our guys up against those guys anytime, Cecil. Anytime. Okay. There's no, no such one more, thing one as more quick question. One more quick statement. I've had some issues on my property from the first building that they built. I have had to deal with water issues that they, in my opinion, have created or pushed to my property that it, it's it's something that I have to deal with forever now because I was kind enough to give a an easement uh, on, on the first round. So I, I think that we all have to be very, very careful because there could be other issues from that that may affect other property owners with this new uh, this new plan. Yeah, and I'll just I'll just add to that. This is Pierre again at New England. Um, the easement was actually a deeded easement, just so we know that that Al didn't give it. And um, there was some litigation that was accompanied by the the resolution to the so-called water, um, and that's all been settled, so it shouldn't be right up here. Okay, and I'll, and I'll just respond to that, Pierre. You're right. It has been settled by the court, but the water issue has not been, it, it hasn't changed. And, you know, there's, there's other things I can talk about, Pierre. I mean, I have, I've had to call you several times to get your vehicles off of the easement so that my my tenants can travel on that same easement. So we can which, we can go back and forth for the next hour. Which is supposed to be a one-way, which is supposed to be a one-way onto Commerce, and they're driving in, so, you but, know. But, it's, it's, but not it wasn't it's not here for there. You know, we this want to be socially going, Get ready. <laughs> so I want to, we're not going to solve the F-35 noise discussion and we're not going to no. solve everything else here, but um, I appreciate your comments, Al, and Thank that you. was helpful. And um, I would like to get back to the commission, but um, did we want to let Heather and Jeff, who've had their hand up, say something quickly? Oh, Heather, we can't hear you. you. You've got to R6 unmute. six if you're on a phone. There you go. Uh, first off, I just want, Jeff and I want to say, Mr. Senecal, thank you so much for everything you had just said. You have been an upstanding neighbor. You have been the neighbor to the um, east of us. And you have also come through with many of the things that we had asked you to do. Um, including the tall arborvitaes. And we just want to thank you and 
Um, we appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I would like to respond a little bit um, before we move on to a couple of things. I, first, I wanted um, Heather and Jeff Soren to know that we did read your materials, saw your videos, and I thought you were uh, very clear about what you were saying um, and had no problem understanding and also could see that a business that is um, bursting at the seams would have too many pallets out, would have this and that issue. So it's a combination of, um, of, you know, I took it a little bit with a grain of salt, but you were very clear. And I did not understand how a commercial business could be operating outside loading machinery at five in the morning, because I thought that wasn't okay <laughs> around a residential neighborhood. And so I'm a little confused that that's an allowed practice. Um, so we did, it was very helpful to see all those comments and it did seem like you were pretty even handed including saying what you would wanna see if it does go ahead uh, for mitigation. So thank you. And I, I think from, uh, that probably goes for you, Sarah and John as well and Cindy. Um, I also see a business here that's um, been very successful and has in many ways been a good neighbor in a difficult spot because of being an industrial use next to a residential zone. Um, and so the standards are higher for New England Chimney Supply than for someone who is protected by being in a different zone. And so um, I'm empathetic to the situation, um, but it's a, a difficult situation. So I, I didn't know if it helped to hear those comments from the chair, but I, I th hope you all feel that you're heard and that we do understand this is a difficult si uh, situation and we have to do our job diligently to find our way through it. Emily, can you guide me as to what we should do next? Oh, yeah. I, if you don't mind, I, I know one thing I would like to do next. I'm. I've since 2014, I've been Williston's representative to Green Mountain Transit. And so I have a lot of observations and comments about the bus questions. But with Matt being here, um, I know Matt, your capital projects, uh, Matt Kimball, but um, do you wanna speak to some of the things that were said? Uh, sure, yes. Um, so like Chapin said, I'm the capital projects manager. Um, I'm, I'm not, too tuned in on the planning side, um, so I can't speak to the ridership numbers. Uh, I will check on pre-COVID numbers um, there, uh, but another consideration uh, about the, sh the shelter from a ridership perspective is locating it near a, a rather sizable employer, uh, such as uh, New England Chimney Supply, does provide opportunity for potential growth, and we would hope to see uh, ridership numbers potentially grow, and that could be another consideration um, for increasing amenities at the location. And I think it may also be beneficial to keep in mind that there may be benefits to the bus pull-off that are not tied directly to whether or not there is a shelter there. So um, if there are um, deficiencies in, in locating a shelter at the location, I think we should still consider the bus pull-off and the benefits there. Thank you, Matt. And, and what I'd add is that many of the operators hate pull-offs because then they can't pull back on. <laughs> People don't let them back in. And um, if they're running behind, it can make their problem worse. If they're running ahead, it's great. They can let all the cars that were maybe being slowed. So some bus drivers, even when there's a pull-off, will stop out in the main in the travel lane just to not spare themselves having to get back into traffic, which is one of the more dangerous operations. So it's complicated. Um, but on the whole, having the option of a pull-off um, adds a, a valuable feature. Um, is there anybody else who should comment, Emily? Bef Craig Keller from B Trans is here. Um, I know there's been some talk about a crosswalk option across Route 2, and he might be able to speak to the viability of that. Sure, Craig. Hey, thanks, Chapin. Uh, can you hear me? We can. All right. I have some internet issues sometimes where I live in the hinterland. Uh, yeah, I guess we did meet with Ben 
uh, and the last year to talk about the proposal. Um, as far as the bus pull off, e trans, obviously, you know, we're supportive of public transit. Uh, the comment you made about getting back into traffic is a good one. Um, perhaps since it's a few hundred feet after Brownell, the traffic signal will provide some breaks in the traffic so the bus could get back out. But obviously having some pedestrian connectivity, um, we would really want to see that at least as far as a block up to Commerce Street, which seems to be the latest proposal that has been put forward as whether a path or a sidewalk. Um, but in some fashion, have you know, have a place for pedestrians to go, not just have a, you know, shelter and a stop that's sort of isolated. Um, as far as relocating the driveway, we haven't seen accidents. I checked in the last five years, um, both at Commerce and at the New England Access, and there's, there's no, I didn't see any significant accidents or any pattern. Um, so, you know, from a permitting point of view, we're fine with shifting the access a little further west. Um, as far as a crosswalk, I think that's going to be problematic. Um, you know, crosswalks are tough. On Williston Road, if you're not at a traffic signal, it's hard to, you know, it, it's really hard to justify putting a crosswalk. You're, you're supposed to have 20 um, pedestrians crossing in an hour. I, my sense is that would be difficult to uh, justify. Um, I, I don't think commerce is close to meeting signal warrants either. So I don't, you know, being a dead end street, I, I can't really, I mean, redevelopment can occur, but I'd have a hard time thinking it would meet signal warrants anytime soon. So a, a crosswalk is going to be going to be difficult um you know ideally you cross it you know it's about 1800 feet between harvest and brownell it's it's tough being in the middle but obviously at a signalized intersection it's much safer and you could work in the pedestrian phase um on demand so you know overall I, you know i don't see any significant issues from you know, from B-Trans's point of view, as far as what's being, you know, proposed by, uh, you know, Ben in New England. Thank you, Craig. Um, we did have um, some comments all from Megan Cope, who couldn't, a uh, planning commissioner who couldn't be here. Is this the time, Emily, to read those into the record? Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah, oh, um, so okay. I'm sharing her letter. Um, I will note that because she's not here, this letter could not be considered a vote. It's just considered comment. Um, because I have to log off early for my West Coast meeting, I did just want to say that I'm not in favor of moving forward with the NACS request for a specific plan. There are re three reasons for me. One, the public benefit proposed is not substantial specifically because it's a pull-off bus pad in a place with almost no passenger demand and no existing connections to safe crossings or sidewalks. Two, the proposed plan is not in keeping with the current visual or functional character of the neighborhood, which includes a small pocket of more affordable homes. And three, the substantial objections from several abutting landowners suggest that there is already some level of animus and dissatisfaction which would only worsen with the proposed expansion. I will also add that I do not agree with municipalities caving to the threat of the loss of jobs and facility closures. There is significant research that demonstrates that such gestures on the part of towns and cities overwhelmingly fail because companies have their own trajectories and financial decisions that are made independent of any perceived commitment to maintaining jobs in the long term. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Emily. Um, I 
Chapin, so this I is would, Shayla. Go ahead, Shayla. Sorry, I did have one other question, which was, um, well, two actually. One is around this, the public benefit. If um, the decision is that this is not a significant or substantial public benefit, does the applicant have the opportunity to repropose a different project? I, I think the answer is yes. Okay. And then the second is whether it would be of interest to, to you as chair to hear any ideas from the neighbors of a project that they would think would be a substantial benefit. Or if that's not a good use of time, then we can skip that. I, th I think because it was asked in the survey that we shouldn't go over it again, Ask it again. unless okay. somebody wants to jump in. And the main thing I heard was not to expand was a, would be a substantial benefit to them. Um, uh, Heather and Jeff has their hand up. Do you want to respond to that? I guess since I, I I guess my my comment is if this were to ever move forward, if everybody's so against this bus stop, why can't we use the the why can't he offer to do more for the neighborhood of Kirby Lane? Why can't he offer or why can't NESCS offer to put a 20 foot high beautiful like beautiful fence up that will block us from them instead of this unnecessary um, pull off of the bus. Why can't we discuss those types of things? Why this is also, we're also Williston residents that will benefit from this. Like why does it have to be a bus stop that he puts in or they put in that Williston benefits from? Why can't it be a, a, a huge fence that, that, that blocks us from them that we benefit from? And I'm going to res I respond a little bit to that, which is that it has to be something that's in the town plan as an objective of the town for public benefit. So I totally agree that more soundproofing between the residential area and the commercial area is a significant benefit to the neighbors and one that we would support. Um, but it's not doesn't meet the requirements of a specific plan being a general um, benefit based on what's in the town plan. Um, understood. Yeah. Um, understood. I just wanted to make comment is if um, if there were a time that um, yeah. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna sign off. Thank you. So Emily, are we now at the point we should discuss what we're gonna? Which of the three proposed motions, or were there two proposed motions we're gonna do? Right, there's two proposed motions. Um, you guys can discuss those as well as the recommendations for the committee charge and the guiding information for the committee to consider um, if you choose to move forward with that motion. Well, and let me do it just sort of a straw poll. I felt like if we do go ahead, the guiding information and the makeup of the committee were um, very good. And so unless people wanna talk about that, the, the discussion, to me, the key decision is whether we're moving ahead. Do, do, do the other commissioners feel that way as well? I agree Just with you, Chair. Okay. Um, and and uh, Chapin, do you mind if I, Chapin, do you mind if I add one comment, class question? Go ahead, ben. Um, I think that the commission um, should also consider the path forward here that this pro that this specific plan takes. Um, just because the commission decides tonight to move forward doesn't mean that we can't continue to enhance this project in terms of the public benefit and moving forward by may, uh, taking suggestion from this group. Um, it doesn't mean that this is the only thing that we, we, are, we can or are going to build. Um, I think we, the applicant, are willing to continue to have this conversation if this group um, allows us to and that we um, want to continue to try to enhance this public benefit if this is not deemed to be enough to the town. Thank and, you, Ben. And that is a great point there. We're very, very forthcoming as a company and, and dynamic as we move forward. Thank you. Um, and in fact, I was going to ask if the applicant wanted to say anything. And so you, you were right on, right on cue. Um, and so, so Chapin, I'll, I'll add to that as well. This is Pierre at New England. Sure, Pierre. Uh, 
So yeah, so long and the short of it is, uh, you know, our goal is to be a good community member, uh, provide good jobs, and certainly we can look at all aspects of mitigating concerns, uh, which is why we reached out to the abutting neighbors uh, originally and got them involved immediately. Um, so really nothing's off the table. What we're looking to do is, you know, create a home that we can grow into, uh, employ more people and, and be socially, you know, good neighbors. And uh, Chapin, uh, uh, one last piece for me is, you know, I think the goal tonight is to, is if, if we can move forward, is to form an advisory group. And that advisory group is, will consist of members of the public, um, members of potentially VTrans, GMT, the applicant, the town. Um, forming that group provides us with the opportunity to take all of the information that we've received during these last two meetings to try to um, continue to formulate a plan which is going to be beneficial to the town. Um, and I think providing that opportunity to the applicant at this point, at this very infant, infant stage of the process, allows us the chance to, to continue to take these comments and implement them into the plan to get us to the point where we have a substantial public benefit, if one is not deemed to be there currently. Thank you. So, uh, Commissioner, comments on, I, I heard at least one Shayla saying she was, if we do decide to go ahead, she was okay with the layout of the committee and the charge to the committee. Um, if any, I feel like that's the easy part. If we're going to go ahead, I feel like our plan is laid out well. Um, the, the question is, are we going to go ahead? Is there substantial benefit to what's been proposed? Are you are you calling a vote, Chapin? Just to be clear. No, I'm I'm asking for discussion on that point. Oh, okay, sure. I mean, I you know I'll I'll, I'll preview a vote, which is I, I agree that the the process is laid out well, um, and and I think we've talked about the substantial public benefit in terms of the bus stop because that's the most controversial portion. But we do have to remember that substantial public benefit does include jobs, and jobs are listed in this. So you know, I my leanings would be. Um, if we are going to take a vote on this, I'd probably vote to move the process forward and try to address these concerns about litter and noise and sight lines, and things like that, to the to the sufficiency of the of the uh, neighbors, right? I mean, I think that's the most important thing. But I do think that the public benefit is sufficient to allow the process to move forward. That's my take. Thank you, Alex. Other commissioners. Um, I usually like to go last, but I'll go at this point. I abstained the last time and it's because I'm skeptical about the bus pull-off being a substantial benefit unless it includes um, sidewalk slash um, path from Brownell Road to Commerce Street. Um, a substantial benefit would be a signalized crossing at Commerce Street, but I don't know if that's even something that could be considered with them, um, you know, the trans would have to say that was a great idea. Um, a pull, bus pull off at Commerce Street where there's the current stop would be um, more meaningful without having sidewalk because at least people would be directly onto Commerce Street. Um, on the other hand, I am for anything that encourages public transit and I believe that our future, we're gonna have much more public transit happening that we're gonna become less automobile centric and more transit centric. Um, and so I believe building infrastructure for pedestrian walking, uh, biking and bus transit is an investment in the future that we are headed towards uh, if we're gonna meet the state's energy goals and so forth. Um, so um, any, I would just say that as it stands, it's to me not a substantial benefit because people getting on and off, it really would be just for this facility or perhaps for people going with the amendment to have a sidewalk to Commerce Street for people on Commerce Street. Um, and I would wanna see it combined with pedestrian access from Brownell Road to Commerce and so that people have a way to get across they could get off at that bus stop and still cross the street. Um, that's that's where I'm at. 
I also want to say I feel like in any other setting, the kinds of issues with noise and um, exhaust at the loading dock are normal for a um, business of this sort. And it's the juxtaposition of that loading dock so close to residential areas that makes it really hard. Um, and so I don't know what the solution to that is. If in a perfect world um, with the bought up property, maybe adding more parking and having a wider buffer, but not enlarging the building would, you know, <laughs> would be the kind of thing I would love to see to give a better protection to the residential component and still allow the commercial component to, to, to fly. Um, but that's not what we're here about tonight. Uh, tonight it's about, is it a substantial benefit to add the bus pull off and, uh, and has since also added a sidewalk from there to commerce. And if we say there's substantial benefit, then the process is laid out for the next steps. Um, John, are you on the um, uh, DRB? Yes, John, I'm John Hamilgarn with, um, I'm on the, the vice chair of the DRB. Um, uh, I didn't know if you wanted to speak at all to when this gets further down the road. What I didn't want to do is have us do all this work and put um, NECS through a lot of steps and then have the DRB say, oh, no, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, well, the DRB is a, is a, a committee of seven. Uh, so I, I'm really not prepared in this forum to speak for the DRB. No. Um, I don't think that would be right. I do know that, um, as Emily and, uh, has pointed out, the, uh, the sidewalk issue is one that we have been taking up more so um, in, in recent uh, hearings than perhaps when this project was first put forth. Um, I know that uh, I, I would say to the neighbors, uh, thank you for the preview. Um, if this moves forwards and it gets to a hearing, I'm sure we'll hear all of this again. Um, so, uh, and it does appear, and again, this is the first night that I've actually listened or, or read any of the, of the uh, particulars of this hearing. So, um, but it does seem like there are some concerns there that uh, that will need to be addressed uh, by the DRB. Thank you. Uh, and, and, and Chapin, one, one last comment is, I, I would urge though that, uh, I would urge people not to kind of just let this slide by at this point, thinking the DRB will take care of it. Um, the DRB very much is is uh, responsible to to rule on hearings based on the, the, the town plan or the, the, uh, the development yes. bylaws. And so e even if we don't like something, we, if it meets the bylaws, we're, we're obligated to actually approve that. Yeah, Chapin, I'd like to add that um, John Marcotte from the HAC, the Historic and Architectural Advisory Committee is also here tonight. When establishing an advisory committee, the bylaw does recommend um, members from other boards both Johns have experience reviewing and administering the current bylaw, so they would be an asset to the committee, um, making sure that whatever standards get adopted vis-a-vis -vis, um, landscaping, buffers, lighting, if the nuisance chapter, looking at the nuisance chapter, um, and then the zoning map, that those changes are clear and legible based on their experience administering the current standards. Um, John's right that at the end of the day, the DRB um, is very exacting and administers what their authority is allowing them to do in the written standard. Understood. Thank you. And John Marcotte, did you want to say anything or we do appreciate knowing why you're here? <laughs> no, I just wanted to be in on what was being said for potential future use is all. So that's it. Thank you. So um, commissioners are, um, actually, how many commissioners do we have left? <laughs> we have Shayla, um, Jill, me, and Alex, um, and Kate, good. Oh, and Ron, good. Okay, we do have a quorum. 
<laughs> uh, with people with their video off, I was losing track. So um, I almost feel like I need to call the question for the commissioners. And um, Emily, could you pull up, could you share the screen and show the draft resolutions that you supplied us? Um, and it might be a little tri tricky to read, um, but what option one says is no substantial benefit, um, moving that the commission determined no substantial ben community benefit is likely to result and decide not to continue the process for New England chimney supply. The second um, includes a list of findings um, and a motion. Emily, mm -hmm. can you change that to page width, perhaps? There we go. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you for those of us who are on progressives now. <laughs> <laughs> and option two is uh, with all these whereas is, is to say to. Um, right, you don't have to read those. Those are the findings. Um, whereas the stated purpose of the proposed specific plan is to expand chimney supply. And whereas New England chimney supply meets the definition of a basic industry, one that expects exports goods, services, and or information from the region. And whereas the applicant has proposed job retention expansion in a basic industry as the first substantial benefit by retaining about 80 employees and potential for 10 to 20% increase after expansion. And whereas the applicant has proposed a bus pull off and concrete pad as the second substantial benefit and whereas the definition of substantial public benefit uh, references major infrastructure assets in town plan 6.1.3 states, the town will continue to support local public transportation agencies, including SSTA, Green Mountain Transit and providing service to Williston. 6.1.3.4 also states, there are many locations where there are inadequate places for bus passengers to get on and off buses along the major roads in Williston, especially Williston Road and Mountain View Road. The town shall work with GMT to identify and build appropriate locations for pull-off locations uh, for buses along these routes. And whereas Green Mountain Transit wrote a letter of support stating they were in favor of lo locating a bus pull-off in the identified location. Therefore, so-and-so moves that the Planning Commission determine with written findings above that substantial community benefit could result from the New England Chimney Supply specific plan, but only if the infrastructure assets are enhanced as described in the committee charged below and appoint a citizen advisory committee as charged below. And if I could highlight the word could there, I think that the group would be served well by that. Um, and then what I have in the, the committee charge is um, that they'll work with town staff and the applicant. Um, they'll present a draft specific plan and then the information about the conceptual ideas um, that benefit the community um, for, as an infrastructure asset, um, as well as looking at um, the compatibility, air, air quality noise, screening, as well as landscaping and lighting, among other bylaw elements. So we have a choice of those two motions. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any questions for New England Chimney Supply on those or? Um, is, there, is there anything un unanswered, I should say? <laughs> Um, to me, we don't see, for my opinion, there's not a substantial benefit at, as proposed enough to warrant changing the zoning. But um, I guess my question for you would be, if we continued this hearing instead of voting one way or the other, um, did you hear anything tonight that, that 
you think would allow you to change my mind? Well, Mr. Chair, I think I would start by stating that we don't need the commission to determine that there is a substantial benefit. It's that there could be a substantial benefit from this project. That's a very important distinction. And so I understand that at this time, you don't believe that there is one now, but the vote is if there could be. Thank you, Ben. So um, I'm gonna call the roll, I guess, and uh, ask people, you can just say one or two, you can say, uh, we're gonna end the process now or two is we're gonna form the committee and um, see if there can be a substantial benefit. Um, I'll go alphabetically or at least in the order that are on my Thank screen. You. Yes. Sorry. I just have one more thing that I wanna make sure I fully understand is that in, in light of what Ben just said and, and looking at the, the resolution, what if we vote to move forward with the advisory committee and it, the plan comes back to us and we get another chance to say, no, this still does not meet or yes, it does. That's correct. We do get another chance. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Correct, Emily. Continue. Yes, and I'm gonna pull up the, the flow chart because that'll make it easier to understand. Yeah. Um, so the advisory committee would develop the specific plan, the town plan and bylaw amendments that would need to be um, changed for this to move forward. The applicant would work on enhancing their proposal around the specific plan based on what was laid out in that guidance document. Um, then the committee would have to decide, the commission would have to decide to move forward and formally warn public hearings and have a formal vote on town plan and bylaw amendments before it moves forward to the select board. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. I could also see um, emphasis on the could that Ben made. The committee could meet a couple times and have some questions and return to the planning commission for some guidance along the way before they present um, their final package. There could be some um, check-ins. Good. What I don't want is to ask um, New England Chimney Supply and the committee to do a lot of work if, if we're gonna say, no, that's no good at the end of the work anyway. And so that's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, and I don't know, I guess, and so in a sense, I was proposing a, perhaps a third alternative of uh, continue the hearing before we decide yay or nay. And so we have more information in front. But if people are in favor of going ahead, if number two has the majority of the votes, then we are, we are set. So why don't we vote on what we've got? Um, and Alex, you've already said how you're gonna vote? Yeah, uh, I'll stick with that. I vote number two, I think it's worth okay. continuing. Jill? Number two, Ron. Uh, one. Number one. Um, Kate. Sorry, um, I'm very conflicted here. Um, I feel uh, there's a lot of good points on both sides. Um, I think I would lean with Alex and Jill at this point. Oh, wait, Alex said one and Jill said, oh, two, uh, Alex said two and Jill said two, got it. Um, okay, so another vote for two and um, Shayla. Yeah, I, I am gonna vote two and I just wanna be very clear that I do have, still have significant reservations and I um, agree with you Chapin, I don't want New England Chimney Supply and the neighbors and participants and everyone to do. Um, I am worried, I guess, about this because I don't want people to do lots of work. Um, so I wanna be clear that I support it going forward and it needs a lot of work in order for me to feel like I could vote for it in the future. 
Okay, so is that a vote for two, but with a ca that caveat? Yeah, yes, yeah, sorry, it's a vote for two. <laughs> I just wanna be very clear okay. about my reservations. Um, and so the, the twos have it. Emily, was our, were we just, if I vote one, are we two to four? Did I, I'm not counting right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Chapin and Ron are no, and then four yeses is six, and Megan's not here, so yeah. seven. So, so four to two. Carrie, so we did vote as, um, I'm, I'm gonna say that we didn't formally state the, take the motion, but we are using the motion that was in the packet. Um, is it all right, Emily, that, that I ran that a little bit unconventionally? Matt, do you think there's an issue with that? I'm sorry. What ex what is I, the I, question? I just I just did a roll call. Yeah. yeah. Seconded it, but everybody voted. So I didn't take a motion. I did a roll call. So I think I think you're okay with a with a roll call. Um, I I just wanted to make sure that you're only counting who's here right now. And yes, you are. Okay. So that's fine. You're right. Yeah. That we're four to two with one person not here. Yep. Um, very good. Well, um, con I, I think um, con congratulations, Ben and, and Timney <laughs> Supply for making the next step. And um, uh, Emily, you have, there's one other thing I think we need to do, which is assign the last one or two members of the advisory committee. Correct. So you said, um, I believe there were two neighbors that volunteered, they wanted to do it? Yeah, so um, Cindy Provost and then Cecil Royea both said yes. Sarah and John Rock were a maybe. Um, Heather and Jeff Soren, um, while very interested in the process, don't have the time to commit to a committee. Um, so there's two yeses and one maybe. The bylaw says you can appoint one or more resident of the affected neighborhood. Um, I would like to see either one of the rocks or the Sorens there since they are the most affected by what happens at the back of that property. Is that possible? Uh, Heather, I you're can... raising your hand. <laughs> sure. Um... I guess it would all depend on the time. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Yes. Um, sure. So uh, we certainly want to be involved with everything that goes on here. And I think Sarah and John feel the same way, but it also depends on the timing. As we mentioned that we, we all have lots of other commitments and this is not something that we all um, plan to have happen in our lives. It's something that got thrown into our lives. So we, are now forced to take the time to defend our properties. Um, so this is ex taking extra time away from, you know, our kids learning schoolwork and, and so on and so forth. So we would like to be on the committees, but we're not really sure of the times and the dates. So I would certainly love to connect with Emily or um, Matt to find out the exact dates. I would love, to, I don't know if I'm allowed to be on um, part of the committee and do the walkabout and not be on some part of the committee, but be on the walking part of the committee. Um, we want to be involved as much as possible, but may not be able to be involved with everything. I'd like to say just for everybody, the, the meetings of the committee will be warned and will be open and anybody can attend and contribute and participate whether you are a, a voting member or not. Um, and so this is more about uh, the core committee with the uh, voting people. Yes, we're happy to um, be a part as well. So Heather, yeah. obviously we'll stay in touch with each other and share, you know, so I'm happy to, to volunteer. I'm, I'm happy if one of you two families is is there and then um, uh, should we 
uh, there's Cecil and Cindy and Cindy's across the street. I'm a little more um, in terms of the voting members feeling that people who are the side of butters are more, um, have more of a, should have more of a vote um, even though everybody can contribute. Um, so my recommendation would be um, uh, Cecil and Sarah, if we do two. Comments from the committee? I think that's a good choice. Thank you, Alex. I also think it would be, I guess we get, or more, so if, I'd be open to three people. Well, and, and uh, just pointing out that everybody can participate and shape this. The question is, who who is the, yes. <laughs> I don't want anybody not to participate who has an interest in that. Uh, I want to say that to Cindy, who I didn't nominate, but said she was interested. So can you hear uh, us? Cindy raised your hand. Who is that? Hi, Jeff Soren. I'm wondering if I can join this committee. Can they hear me? Yeah, yeah we, yes. we can hear you. <laughs> and Cindy, you can go ahead and unmute yourself too. Make sure everyone gets a chance. Yeah, hi, Emily. Um, I have a hard time understanding why people don't understand that somebody who lives across the road from this huge building has lights on all the time in the front um, at night and has a great impact on the people across the road is not somebody who should be part of the process to represent the people on this side of the road. Yes, I don't abut, but I see all the traffic going in and out. They affect our leaving of the driveway. And we have to look at the building all of the time, a building that should be in an industrial park versus on our street where residents have to be conflicted and bothered by it. I, this is an issue. And I don't feel like anybody should determine who could, who, who and how people are being impacted. Uh, Jeff, Jeff and Heather agree that Cindy should absolutely be involved in the committee and Jeff Soren would like to be involved in the committee as well. Um, good. I, I um, want to make sure people know they can participate whether or not they are on quote unquote yeah. the committee. If I, if I might make um, a comment whether any of the neighbors are, are willing to sort of you know proxy to one another, just remember that this committee doesn't make the decision. The committee's just to work with New England Chimney Supply to come up with a plan to bring back to the clan, planning commission to vote. So you'll be able to put your input on this no matter what. You can attend all these meetings as Chapin said and shape the plan. But if there's one particular neighbor or two particular neighbors who are going to be consistently available to help make sure the process moves forward and you trust to represent your voice, I'd recommend you plan to attend and then, you know, give that person your proxy, if you will, as a voting member. They'll bring the, you know, all of your ideas to the meetings and we will bring the collective proposal back to the planning commission for votes. You'll be able to participate in the individual, you know, sub subcommittee here and you'll be able to participate in the planning commission meetings and, and we will make sure everybody is heard. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't, what I don't want to do is create a subcommittee that is, you know, 12 members long and can never find the time to meet because it's so many people required to get a quorum, if that makes sense. Hi, everyone. This is um, Ashley Fowler. So we, um, oh, sure. Sorry, Shaden. Um, Go ahead, Ashley. I would, I would also like to volunteer to be on this committee. Um, while I'm not a, land of budding neighbor. I do live um, just off of North Brownell Road. Um, I would definitely be interested in trying to find a way to bring both sides to the table to find common ground um, in favor of the expansion. No. So 
So Emily, could you clarify the process? You said you mentioned the word appointment. So, so what is the process for making a decision here? So we have, I think, five people who have volunteered at this point to be on the committee. Right. What is, so the, what is the process for determining them? The bylaw says one or more. Um, staff recommended two with the other appointments of DRB, Hack, um, and the two state representatives. Were all, that would be seven members total. I, I didn't want to recommend any more members than seven because Planning Commission and DRB have seven members. Um, and just to keep that similarity of number of members, I think the more people, the harder it is to have everybody um, find a date and time that works for each other. Um, and anyone who's not a formal committee member can still participate. Uh, as Heather mentioned, there will be a site visit component to the committee work. Um, so that will be publicly warned. Anyone can attend the site visit um, and provide feedback and comment along the way. The recommendation was just to keep the group smaller so it's more manageable. If, if I may, Emily, I'm, I'm actually asking, what's the literal uh, process for picking those two names? Like, is there a prescribed oh. process to shape in as chair, just appoint them, or do we have to run a vote for it? I, I, I'm really asking a pedantic question, sorry. Yeah, the bylaw is silent on it, so I, I would think a vote is fine. Um, it... Um, would it be all right to have five uh, members of the public? Um, one rock, one bring sword. us up to a ten-member committee. Just... Yeah. A ten-member committee plus um, town staff attending those meetings and the applicant yeah. uh, of Ben Pierre. So it would be a very large, a large group. Um, I'm all for participation. So it's really hard for me to say no <laughs> to someone participating. Matt uh, Boulanger, do you have a suggestion? Um, all I was going to say, Chapin, is um, we've, we've talked a little bit in the staff report and informally about you know, wanting to set, wanting to have the planning commission set a fairly rigorous schedule for this committee. Um, so if there's a large number of appointments to the committee, I would just encourage people to plan to be flexible about um, being able to meet. Um, that's that's kind of the, the challenge we, we might run into is we need, the larger the committee, the larger the number of people we need for a quorum. Um, and, you know, that could, that could get a little challenging. Um, so, you know, that's a little bit up to the planning commission to decide, but I think it's in your interest to have this committee meet efficiently and, and return a decision in a prompt manner, um, so that the planning commission can, can make their final decision on it and, and move along. And I'm looking there, I don't think there's a schedule proposed in our documents, is that right? So we suggested July 20th as a date for the committee to return um, with a, a draft the recommendation, probably about four or five Zoom meetings um, through May and June, kicking, off, kicking that process off with a, a site visit. The applicant would be responsible for minutes and agendas. We'd probably recommend some sort of doodle poll to figure out what date and time throughout the week makes the best sense for everybody to participate. Um, and then there would be documents prepared in advance that committee members would review. We would talk it over at the meeting um, and then set the date for the next meeting. Shayla? Um, I, I guess I would support appointing all five members. I hear you guys on the challenge of scheduling, but I, one of my main concerns is that these individuals have the opportunity to participate in this process fully. So I, I would support appointing all five. That's where I'm at too. I would go along with that too. 
I'm not going to stand in the way of it. And so I'll just do a good job scheduling since I'm the sacrificial planning commission member who has to be on these meetings. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll just ask you all to please, please uh, bear with our scheduling. But uh, I'm, I won't stand in the way of it. Okay. Then um, I would entertain a motion to apply the five people who have expressed interest. And I'm assuming, uh, John, John and Sarah, that you're one, you can be one representative and the same for the Sorens. Um, you can decide which of the two of you. <laughs> All right. Um, Rock, paper, scissors. Good. So um, I would entertain a motion to appoint those five people to join the committee as otherwise listed in the minute in the um, packet. I so motion. Okay, I'll take that from Alex with a second from Shayla. Is that right? Were you seconding? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Um, any discussion? Okay, all in favor and I can see everybody. So go ahead and raise your hand if you want. Say aye. Okay, any opposed? Any abstentions? So we unanimously approve all interested neighbors participating. And just to confirm that Cecil, Royea, um, as one, Sarah, or um, John as two, Heather or Jeff as three, um, Cindy Provost as four, and Ashley Fouts as five. Correct. Um, in addition to John Hemmelgarn from the DRB, Alex Daly from Planning Commission, John Marcotte from Hack, Matt Campbell from Green Mountain Transit, and Craig Keller from VTrans. Correct. So, and I'm, uh, that was already part of motion. Wasn't that part of the motion we did earlier for um, option two? Just that we hadn't filled in these names? Correct, and I think it's fine to have done a second motion, even though I didn't draft it in the staff report. Okay. I think the process has been fine tonight. Okay, so we have moved and seconded and unanimously approved adding those five names to the ones that you already listed. Anything else on this application that we need to do tonight? Um, it said review town volunteer policy and conflict of interest ordinance. Was that just as informational or um, is it worth stressing to people who participate on this that the, you'll want to look at those documents, but primarily it's a matter of acting in the best interest of Williston um, and not for any personal gain, um, but for the best interests of the community. Yeah, and Chapin, we'll, we'll review those materials um, at the first meeting of the advisory committee as well. It's, you know, just sort of standard, you're now a public official and here's, here's what Williston's policies are for the conduct of public officials. So we'll, we'll do that right off the bat at their first meeting. Okay, um, wrap up and next steps on this item. Uh, yep, so um, we'll be in touch with everybody about the meeting schedule um, and getting a site visit in that for first community meet or that first committee meeting scheduled. Good. And I want to thank the commissioners and the applicant and the public for sticking with us on a long meeting. Um, planning commissioners, we still have some additional business, and anybody who wants to stay on is welcome to stay on. But I would um, wondered if we could quickly do our regular business uh, before we adjourn. And, and could just quickly here on behalf of New England Chimney, just wanted to say thank you, everybody, uh, the Planning Commission and all other members of the community that have joined this meeting. And we look forward to uh, continuing this effort and working with you all to try to find a good balance between um, the concerns we've heard and the, and the project that's being proposed. Thank you, Ben. Yes, thank you all. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you, everyone. Um, minutes. Uh, I think we have two sets of minutes to approve. Is that right? I think so. And I'm realizing um, I didn't link them in the agenda. I, I linked the February 2nd just as part of the specific plan package. Um, 
So Chapin, the comment you mentioned earlier was not about the March minutes, it was about uh, the February minutes. Uh, so I read the wrong ones. <laughs> so I, I think we could just push minutes off to the next meeting. Without objection, let's do that, given the hour as well. Um, Form-based code, do we have something we need to know about that? Um, just thanks everybody so much for um, helping spread the word with the public outreach for the kickoff. Um, take the surveys, share the surveys with your friends and family, um, and stay tuned. We're going to have another push for public outreach leading up to the workshop series. And Chapin. Yes, Shayla. Emily and Matt, this is a really annoying request, and you can tell me it's way too much work, but I've been watching some of the from port forum traffic. And I wonder if there's a way to not onerously collect that or have. Yeah, Shayla, we are collecting that um, and we'll be putting that in a chronological log of basically every, any and all kinds of public comment we're getting about the project or the forum based code um, or the growth center. Um, so I've been saving those in email, screenshotting them, and, and we'll be pulling them out. Um, and we'll also be trying to take some of what we're seeing there and on email and elsewhere and pulling it into an FAQ as we go forward. So uh, mm -hmm. we have a meeting coming up with the consultant team tomorrow or the next day to, to keep working on that. Um, but mm -hmm. we, we definitely want to keep a good record of all of that and also be responsive to as much of what we're hearing uh, as we can. Awesome. Thank you. Um, notices from other jurisdictions is that something that can wait till next time matt uh yeah there i i also noticed we don't have links on those i i set up the links but i may not have hit save when i did it <laughs> um uh, real briefly shelburne is amending some of their master sign plan standards and heinsburg is adopting provisions to allow for shade tree mechanics in their rural zoning district um i but i'll we'll link them up next time so you can see them and uh we can leave them on the agenda Okay, and I have one simple announcement, which is the Conservation Commission asked if I um, join their meeting tomorrow morning to um, fill them in on what we're doing about the mobilities project, which is primarily the um, official map. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just going to give them an update on that. And I and Matt reminded me that that's coming up on our next agenda yep. to, to work on the official map. Yeah, it is. So you'll be seeing uh, that draft and, you know, ultimately an official map is a bylaw um, and it can be an amendment to the zoning bylaw. So it would follow the usual review and hopefully um, hearing and transmittal to select board process that you would do with a bylaw amendment. So it's kind of the, you know, we've had a subcommittee working on it and then it's the beginning of something that um, looks like a bylaw amendment procedurally for you. Any other business or announcements? I want to thank you, Emily and Matt, for all the work you did to get the community input and put it together in such a good way. The little grid where you show how each point is either met or not met and so forth and so on. That kind of giving us the information is so useful. Um, it lets us digest it quickly. And it was a lot of information. So thank you. Um, and thank you commissioners for tackling a tough issue tonight. Um, and, and Alex for volunteering to see through the process with the advisory committee. <laughs> I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. No <laughs> motion. <laughs> Ron and Kate. So let's say uh, Kate moved and Ron seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you all so much. Aye. Thanks, everybody. Aye. Good night. Good night. Bye, everyone.